Thank you to Manscaped and Shopify for sponsoring the channel this week. More on them after the reaction. Citizens of the Reject Nation, John and Coy are back in the saddle Woo! for First Blood. Oh. We've never seen it. I have recently learned that the sequel is called First Blood Part 2. I found that <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> if you also found it hilarious and also want us to potentially watch First Blood Part 2, please like, please subscribe if you're not already. Please comment below saying, hey, watch First Blood Part 2, a kind of funny named title with a lot of redundancies and numbering and... Nah. I'd like to thank the fine folks at Prepper for helping cut down these highlights, making it sing, making it have some pizzazz, just giving it that little extra oomph. Jeez. And also, if you want to watch this in its entirety, front to back, beginning to end, the entirety, all of the blood, both first, second, and third, become a patron. You see all the blood spilled, any bit of it. I assume there's more than one. I hope so. I mean, you know, grab, your, grab your boxed set copy mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you can let us know and then you can sync up and we can all enjoy it. I mean, this is a 1982 filming case. I miss the first blood because of filming camera quality. Yes. Know that I made a joke going, oh, it's the first blood <laughs> in advance. <laughs> right. That's when the best jokes happen. When you think of them in advance and they're off and the cuff pre-recorded. That's the intro you want. All right, let's get into it. Mournful, pensive intro. Not a lot of trumpets in openings anymore. Yeah. The timbre of the fallen soldier. Look at this beautiful film grain. Damn. This is a beautiful establishing shot. Rambo rolling into town. I wonder who directed this. The credits will not tell us. They Coy. won't tell us. It's your job to figure it out. Oh, I tell you. All right. Maybe infer. <laughs> David Caruso. Hey. Oh, I'm excited to see what uh <laughs> what puns version of himself he brings to this. <laughs> it's just comic relief. Also shouts out to Alf Humphreys, my uh cat eating long lost ancestor. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Oh, welcome to the heartland. And those feathery Locks. 80s were a different time for hair. I know. You could have a totally different hair do and be, you know, a man, like yeah, a macho yeah, yeah. man. You could get feathered and be a macho man. <laughs> it's almost like Farrah Fawcett esque. Yeah. But still manly. Oh, that's, that's right. It's an adaptation. Just imagine Stallone reading it like, oh, yeah, hey, hey. it's pretty good, you know? No, Adrian. Huh? Yeah. Ted Kotcheff. My favorite director. Don't don't know that Kotcheff. Can you tell me this where Delmar Barry lives? He ain't here. Is he dead? No, no. Oh, he's a friend of mine. As a matter of fact, he wrote this address down. You can see that's Delmar's writing. Yeah, that's his writing. Oh. Uh. John and Rambo, we served on the same team together in Nam. I don't know if he ever talked about me. All the time. He always loved talking about the old days in Nam. <laughs> That's uh, Danforth and Westmore, Bronson, Ortega, and there's Delmar right in the back. Aww. He had to put him in the back because he's so big. If he didn't, he'd, he'd take up the whole picture. Look how big he is. <laughs> Delmar's gone. Yeah. What time will he be back? He died. No. Died last summer. Cancer. Oh. Brought it back from Nam. Good old Agent Orange. Cut him down to nothing. I could lift him off the sheet. Oh, jeez. Poor thing. Very sorry. Feel, I mean, we are, but it feels like a totally different era of cinema, especially with what you associate a Rambo movie with, right? I, you would Nowadays, not have thought Rambo would be like this. So far, I mean, this, sure, could, go, could, this could totally, pop off, but yeah. like, yeah. It's like a good tone setter, that scene. Yeah, it's really just heavy and the weight of war. And two... The vistas, man, the vistas. Well, yeah, and you show up at this, like, idyllic lake house, and now you're in, like, the shadow of a mountain, and, like, things are already looking drearier. Yeah, like. walking through the... Yeah. This guy was everywhere in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> this gonna be a good day on the oh, beat. Oh, <laughs> the belly tap. <laughs> Hope Motel. That beautiful town, man. Yeah, my God. I do love a good mountain town. Yeah, I'm a sucker for a small mountain town. 
Good vacation. He's just like Jack Reacher. He's just always out on the highway. You know, wearing that flag on that jacket, looking the way you do. You're asking for trouble around here, friend. Really? Headed north or south? North. I'll jump in. I'll take you to the clink. I'll get you out of my town. <laughs> yeah. Where are you headed? Portland. Portland is south. You said you were headed north. You got some place <laughs> I can eat around here? There's a diner about 30 miles up the highway. What? <laughs> That's the only <laughs> place to hundreds eat. Of places. <laughs> is there any law against me getting something here? Yeah, me. Why are you pushing me? What did you say? Oh. So why are you pushing me? I haven't done anything to you. First of all, you don't ask the questions around here. I do. This is an interrogation. We don't want guys like you in this town. Drifters. First thing you know, we got a whole bunch of guys like you in this town. That's why. There's dudes out here running drills everywhere. 5% body fat. <laughs> handsome Italian models. In fact, you might say it's boring. But that's the way we like it. And I get paid to keep it that way. Boring. So did I, I thought. Guy hates men with feathered hair. Just real, yeah, real that's, profiling about that's it. That's the true nature of his prejudice. I can't do that. Why should you? Portland, straight ahead. <laughs> Literally the town line of hope. Friggin' hope. <laughs> have a nice day, huh? <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate you. I do respect an anti cop movie in 1982 in the height of like copaganda. Sure. Like, that's at least a different opening. Yeah, different commentary. How many cops has Stallone played in the 80s? And here he is getting hassled by a <laughs> cop. <laughs> Where the hell do you think you're going? Hey, I'm talking to you, goddamn. Come on, man. See some ID. Ooh. All right, you're under arrest. Now you put your hands in the car and you spread them. Spread, spread my hands? Now you're going to put your hands on that car. How you do it, you decide right now. Take him out, Rambo. Yeah, pick up the car and smash him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do we have here, huh? Ooh. Ooh. Why would you be carrying a knife like this? Hunting. I'm Michael Myers. What do you hunt with a knife? Anything you hunt. <laughs> <laughs> I guess guns are more efficient for some stuff, but... Carving them up? Yeah. Good morning, Arthur. Good morning, Will. What do you got? I want you to book this gentleman for vagrancy, resisting arrest. Freaking pig ornament. <laughs> PlayStation. Jeez. <laughs> Damn. Hey, Mitch. <sighs> Mitch. Yo. Escort this young man downstairs, would you? Oh, yes, sir. Mitch. <laughs> yeah, I got this covered. That's it. Yes. Get him, Archie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it looks like it's going to take old Leroy about 10 years to paint this hall. Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> <laughs> My grandpa's name is Leroy. You don't hear it enough. Great name, Leroy. Yeah, you can be Lee or Roy. Or Leroy, which is like the... Three names. Three Beautiful. Roy. <laughs> That's what I named my kid, Three Roy. <laughs> Your name? Your name. Say it. Oh. Oh, oh, shit. Whoa. Go, wait a second. Oof. Hey. Jesus. You got three seconds before I break your face in. He means it. I do. I don't know, man. You think you can get one over on this guy? Woof. Oh, that's little David Caruso. Holy oh, shit. Oh, I did not put that together at all. <laughs> oh, my God. Whole time. Yeah, he's right in front of us. Just didn't recognize him with those sunglasses, you know? <laughs> and his head's all, his neck is all straight. Rambo. John Jay, I promise you're going to talk to me, soldier. I'm starting to dislike you. <laughs> a lot. Ugh. Are we going to beat up a lot of cops? I think he's going to Michael, like, he's going <laughs> to assault on Precinct 13 this place. Yes. <laughs> it won't work that way. It'll only smear and I'll run across. Look, you son of a bitch. If you don't put your goddamn hand down there, I'm going to break it off. Uh, down. Oof. What the hell is going on down here? Oh, nothing I can't handle. Clearly. <sighs> he won't let us print him well. Leave the ink on. <laughs> At 10 o'clock tomorrow morning, you're going up in front of that judge. And you think we're tough. 
<laughs> that judge is going to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> Clean him up. Rest Makeover. <laughs> I want you to go over and get that hose ready. All right? That dude's voice is crazy. Yeah, right? Oof, the scars. Oh, Christ. Whoa. Damn. We should report this to Teasel, Galt. Look at that. He got the old school buff body. Yeah, it's like functional strength. And like his, it makes your ribs really prominent. <laughs> and his body type's so crazy. He's so wide and small. Yeah. yeah. He needs to beat up so many cops. My God. Oh, no. John Rambutt. How you like that, Jesus huh? Christ. Yeah, those fire hoses, that would hurt so much. Yeah. Oh, All right, no. hurry up. It's time for my coffee break. Oh, that's so... F Sit down. Oh. oh, Jesus. Got the mustache in the past. See there? I knew he did. You're just gonna shave your part. <laughs> Take it easy. Yeah. How about a shave? Let's get some Sweeney Todd in here. Oh! Uh. It's like your own flashbacks throat. are intense. Jesus. Ah! Oh, <laughs> good. Yeah. Wowie. You son of a bitch. Come on. What did you expect? Yeah, seriously. You got a man, you put him as a caged animal, and he's trained. God. These guys are the worst. Yeah, they've earned all this. Oh. <laughs> that was a great, like, jump cut so you think he's over here. Yeah. That was fantastic. I like that they gave it 15 minutes of just cops being assholes to earn this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really get you on Rambo's <laughs> side. <laughs> Whoa, Jesus! <laughs> that old school glass. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that thin old school movie glass. Yeah. Whoa. There's a deli right there! I was looking for this! Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn! I oh. like the double check on the guy. <laughs> this is a secret Christmas movie, too. See the lights? Yeah! Christmas! Christmas cannon! Rambo, add it to the Christmas yep. list. Yep. Whoa, was that him? Yeah. It did not sound like him. Was that weird ADR? <laughs> There's a coffee shop. The There's the Godfather pizza <laughs> steak. Easter eggs. Coca-Cola. There's so much food here. Very upset at these lies. 30 miles, diner. No way. <laughs> Whoa. Convenient ramp. Oh, dang. Oh. Ain't no way that car would have nope, survived that. Nope, that car did not land that, that way. That boat would not have no, <laughs> buckled. Yeah. That one shot was one car. The second shot was wee. That was a good stunt, though, because usually in, in a lot of old movies, you'll see the first half and the car, like, clearly breaks oh, in yeah. half. Oh, yeah, then they drive ahead. And then you cut to they the next shot and it's fine. They cut instead. Yeah. <laughs> Wowie. The action's been amazing so far. Yeah, get that suspension, boy. Ooh. Those cars, man, they used to be built. Ah! Yeah. And, like, a real steady ramp up, too, because it starts quiet, it gets slightly more agitated as time goes by, and now, like, up. And well-earned, like, every bit of it. White-knuckling this. Pavement, water, <laughs> mud, <laughs> mud. My cousin Vinny's just in the next <laughs> motel, just, like, out there trying to get the car out. <laughs> I was going to say, what's he going to do in this environment? Yeah. Pause attraction. You're going to get stuck in the mud. <laughs> and all the while, like... The scenery is so gorgeous. Yeah. Consistently. Yeah, I wonder, is Colorado maybe? That's what it looks like. It definitely, yeah, it looks like the Pacific Northwest. If he was heading to Portland, like some outside between Colorado and Portland town, I'm guessing. Because everyone's in the comments about geography. Right, right now, they're like, guys, why don't you know? Yeah! Yeah! Oh, yeah! shit! <laughs> A practical stunt That's with an upside-down cop car. Oh, that yeah. makes me happy. Oof. Look at that. <laughs> wow. Whoa. Another great stunt. I was like, was that planned? Or did they just <laughs> run with that? <laughs> All right, this is the story now. Oh, he'll look there. What are, you, what are you doing, John Rambo? Oh, shit. He's gathering stuff. Oh, yeah. It's cold in the Pacific Northwest in December. Yeah, he's going to need to make a Sasquatch suit. Oh. Get that north. 
Makes an immaculate leather jacket. Yes. <laughs> Mitch, get Orville on the radio. Tell him to get out here with his damn dogs right away. Or tell him to bring the Dobermans. It's going to rain. We'll need dogs that can hunt on sight. Right. Oh, boy. There's a canine unit. You know what? Why don't you just call the National Guard just in case? <laughs> yes. Makes this real ironic. Homemade poncho. Yeah, buddy. Oh, is that a compass? This is a very interesting commentary because, like, I, like we don't have a good history already of taking care of our veterans, but it's also like I, I forget that like Vietnam vets especially, uh, yeah, were like pretty shunned coming back. Yeah, they survive all that and they come back to this. Yeah, like the the way people are so unsympathetic toward him, like. <laughs> We should all be so lucky. Great opening line for that character. Yeah. That's what he auditioned with. <laughs> My dog. Oh, sh can I start again? <laughs> Whoa. That's a wow. beautiful shot. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. He looks like a monk right now. Oh, that would suck. God. How beautiful. And you know they just had to perch across that ridge with a uh, long ass lens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chopper and Gorge, head him off. God. This is like they're hunting some kind of like bobcat that's it been eating everyone's pets like, or yeah, something. It very much feels like, yeah, all the dogs yeah. hunting plus the aerial. Yeah. In this movie, he is the predator. He... Oh, good cut. Excellent framing. Oh. Oh, my God, no. What are, what? That would suck. What great tension in this movie. <laughs> Oh, shit. What are you doing? We're just supposed to spot him. Hold it, Daddy. I can't. Jesus, man. He can't go any place. If you don't buy this thing right, I swear to God, I will kill you. This guy is a sociopath. Absolute madman, mountain cop. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh. <laughs> Kick off the ledge, catch onto the helicopter, swing it around. I think he's gonna grab that tree. Yeah. Whoa! Whoa! Oh ah, my god! He's flipping upside down. What's he gonna? How's he gonna catch that? Ow! Oh, oh, slow as fall, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Do a high fall into some thin branches. Oh! Ow! Ah, Jesus! Jesus! Oh! I miss that. Like, I think they used to sell these kinds of things a lot more with oh, just, yeah. like, the actual dude pain. being in pain. <laughs> yeah. The 80s especially. I feel like we threw our actors at stuff. Yeah. This is, like, the early 80s? Yeah, 82. Because this has, like, still some of that 70s just, like, immediacy of just, like, shit's just happening now. Yeah. Like, you know, but also, yeah. But the 80s, like, brutal action. Totally. Our movie stars are going to actually get hurt some. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh my god. They really did this with a helicopter. It yeah, looks this like. is an insane stunt. Unless they have it on an arm. I think some of the shots are on an arm, but a lot of it's. Jeez. Oh, Whoa. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, it's so good. Yes. Like, Rambo V helicopter, Rambo wins. And it's just enough that you buy it? Yeah. Like, if this was right now, that the, the helicopter would have a machine gun. Yep, and, and it would, and be it would like, have exploded. It's he would have hit enough. the rotor, and it would have exploded. Yeah, yeah, and it would have, like, chopped the tree in half. Yes. With bullets. Like, oh. Oh, my God. Ow. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Smoke it. That guy. <laughs> no. Take his coat. Yeah. And his wallet. And his keys. I mean, it's cold. And draw a mustache on him. <laughs> Get warm, dude. God, though. Just to have a helicopter the, weaving back and forth that? just with the one <sighs> rifle is just, like, perfect. Couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Oh, no, no, no. Shh. Whoa, whoa. God, that's brutal. He was my son's godfather. I have horrible taste <laughs> in friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
what isn't in the handle of this knife? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, needle and thread, damn, smart dude. God. Resourceful. <laughs> oh. Nope. Yeah, buddy. Will. Looks like he wants to turn himself in. Uh, 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 yeah. I didn't do anything. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. What? What? What hit him? What did? It looked like he got hit in the face. Yeah, like did a rock ricochet? Like he got? If he got shot in the face? <laughs> yeah, it's just John Rambo. That's though, true. It's John Rambo. Know. I want that chopper back here right now. I don't want Galt's body out here all night. He's already drawn. Yeah. First blood. Oh. Oh. Snuck it right up on me, Coy. <laughs> He's a Green Beret, Congressional Medal of Honor. Guy's a war hero. I knew there was something oh. about that guy. I love that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to do what I told you to do, goddammit. Get that chopper back here now. Out. Get the chopper to, to here. Yeah, it's trademark somebody else. <laughs> Why don't you let the state police handle this? Yes, the real badasses. <laughs> Stadies. Yeah. He's dead because of that psycho out oh. there. Now you listen, boy, and you listen to me good. I'm going to get that son of a bitch. And I'm going to pin that Congressional Medal of Honor to his liver. Wow. That's specific. Jimmy Olsen is not getting a raise. No. <laughs> He's not going to be working at the precinct much longer. That's how he goes and works at the paper. That's what He's makes like, sense. i got to document this stuff. Atrocities are happening. Perry White's chill compared to this life <laughs> upbringing. Yeah. Come on, Let's go. It's going to storm. Oh, it was a dark and stormy Rambo. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh, Jesus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He definitely has the high ground. I was going to ask where the police got these assault rifles, but then I remembered that we live in America. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you mean at Walmart? <laughs> yeah. Why don't they have more assault rifles? Where's that the police tank? A nice guy with a gun will solve all of this. <laughs> yeah. him. Go get him. Go get him. Go get him, Maggie. Yeah, you should Aww. get your other dog killed. I hope he bonds with the dog. Sends him back at his owner. Yeah. Eats his owner's leg off. Wasn't he just sending the dog out and fine? Is He had a heart attack the second the dog got nipped. The dog was keeping him alive. That's true, yeah. His life force is connected. Good moody soundtrack, too. Mm, I've enjoyed the score. Which I forget who the composer was now, but pretty prolific pr pr uh, composer. I gotta see what the rest of the director's work is, because some of these lock-off shots and these, like, slow pans have been genius. Like, that opening lock-off, like, yeah. pivot, and now these, it's really, like, sweeping. And the setting's great. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't, I didn't even, even do it! it. Yeah. Yeah. So good! So good! <laughs> so good! Oh, no, Archie. Yeah, we don't know that he was trying to stop them from killing him. Bitch! Oh, yeah, he's... He's drawing you guys out. It was also smart to just wound the one good-ish one. Yeah. It's smart. Give you the warning, because the rest of these guys are going to get worse. Oh. <laughs> Predator. Yes. Let's go. Oh, Let's go. <laughs> He's everywhere. And the, even the score sounds like an alien. Like, doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah. Well. Oh. Ooh. Jeez. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> wow. He's out of bullets, but they're not. Jeez, man. You got you something. You shot the boy. Oh. 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 Predator trap. Whoa. I didn't realize there were spikes yeah, all over Yeah, that's what it. he was shaving before. Yeah. Oh. My oh. thighs. Not spiked. Oh. Ow. Oh. Oof. It is no not November. Yeah. <laughs> He got it worst of all. <laughs> yep. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh. Crusoe oh. needs to be here to say that guy's nuts. <laughs> Whoa. Now open the Ark of the Covenant. So efficient with the murder. Yeah. And I guess they're not dead all of them, but whew. Ah! Uh, dude, he was in frame again. I could have killed you. I've been telling you the law. Not here, it's me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Don't my push God. it. I'll give you a war you won't believe. <laughs> Let it Word go. Word home, baby. Oh, oh my Let God. 
girl. Can't hold me back anymore. Woo! Give Damn. you a war you won't believe. That was an incredible delivery of yeah. some lines that could not have worked. Yes. <laughs> like on paper, I'd read that and be like, well, I don't know. I like Stallone a lot in this. This is I've really enjoyed so his much better than I expected. Yeah. I, I thought think, this was going to be a cheesy shoot 'em up. Like, I, I enjoyed, uh, you know, the Dread movie for what it was, but I sure. expected more of that. Sure, sure. Or like, like watching Demolition something Man like Demolition or, Man. Yeah. This is like a good movie. Well, and he's like embodying this character in a in a more earnest way, and it's got way more to say. Yeah, yeah, in its own ways, because like obviously, Demolition Man had plenty to say, and so did Dread, but yeah. this is a more subtle story to tell. Yeah, way way less like wacky satirical. Right, it's not like a commentary in a way of like, is that what that means? It's yeah. like, well, here <laughs> clearly, yeah. Only good thing to come out of this mess is the business of doing it town. Oh boy. The place dry. Got that Leon S. Kennedy jacket. <laughs> Why don't you go home? Don't give me any of your horse shit about jurisdiction in this one. You understand? Would you like me to step outside? <laughs> Just finish up what you're doing. <laughs> yes, I think. Can I leave? <laughs> one goddamn bit of difference, Dave, and you know it. Oh, God. You, People you, start you did this. Now with the law yeah. and all hell breaks loose. Uh. <laughs> 40 years later. <laughs> so glad things have gotten better. Oh, that is so much better. Yeah. This movie fixed everything. <laughs> I made him. Oh, the hell are you? Oh, 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 oh. Colonel Samuel Troutman. Colonel Troutman, Metal Gear. So many movies in Metal Gear. I trained him. I commanded him in Vietnam for three years. I'd say that makes him mine. Yeah, buddy. Send a full bird colonel down here to handle this. The army thought I might be able to help. Because he just whooped your hole. Yeah, Jesus. Rambo's a civilian now. He's my problem. Yeah, he has none of his soldierly training or experiences. <laughs> I didn't come here to rescue Rambo from you. I came here to rescue you from him. Oh, you're stuck in here with me. Such a good line. Strictly speaking, he slipped up. You're lucky to be breathing. That's just great. <laughs> yes. <laughs> in Vietnam, his job was to dispose of enemy personnel. To kill. Win by attrition. Oh. Rambo was the best. You idiot. Halfway in that speech is so good. Like, it, it's the yeah. escalation, not with violence, but with, like, what he's capable of. Yeah. And then more violence. And it's crazy. That they just lifted that character wholesale and put him in Metal Gear. <laughs> <laughs> like that and Steak Plissken. <laughs> like, literally. Whoa. Good cut. Great cut. He was hungry. Are you telling me that 200 men against your boy is a no-win situation for us? You send that many. Don't forget one thing. What? A good supply of body bags. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Think of yourself in a position to send 200 guys after one guy. Maybe you don't want to do that. <laughs> if you're serious about taking Rambo out clean, follow me. I love <laughs> that that closed the, like, well, yeah, that's the obvious thing to do. And also the ego on the guy's hick town thing. Like the, yeah. Like, every dialogue scene is as important as the action scenes. Totally, totally. And just to watch the earlier, it was like, this is just a pleasant, sleepy town. And what the whole place upside problem. down. Like... <laughs> State police calling John Rambo. Jeez. Come in, please. If you're listening, Rambo, here's your situation. You are surrounded. Every possible exit has been blocked. God, it's like a total war zone now. If I was in his position, I'd try to pick up some information. Maybe catch some crosstalk. Of course he's listening. We call that intel? Maybe you can talk him into sparing all our lives by giving himself up. At least we'll get a radio fix on his position, if you don't mind setting him up for it. That's like bringing the pigeons to the cat. <laughs> Yeesh. Covey leader calling Raven. Oh, yeah, this one's different. Covey leader to identify Baker T. Rambo, Whoa. Mesner, Coletta, Jorgensen, Danforth. The whole unit. Yeah. And we knew some of the names from before in that opening scene. That's yeah, smart. Yeah, it's everybody named to the picture. It's a good, like, you can trust me beacon. Yeah. I wonder oh. if there's a code in there, too. Yeah, probably. Rambo, are you all right? Over. Baker team, they're all dead, sir. Not Delmar Barry. Barry's gone, too, sir. Oh. I tried to get in touch with you, but the guys at Bragg never knew where to find you. Yeah, well, I haven't been spending much time there lately. They've got me down in D.C. I'm shining a seat with my ass. We'll talk about that when you come in. I can't do that, sir. Yeah. Well, you did some pushing of your own, John. They drew first blood, not me. First blood! Great use of title as yeah. plot. Yeah. <laughs> as actual meaningful dialogue. Rambo, acknowledge. It's all finished, Colonel. Come first light, I'm going to put every man I got up on that ridge. That will get him my way. I don't think he'll be there first light. Yeah. Or he'll be just above. Yeah. Come on, move it! 
and the big military yeah, drums. And these, and these are the guys marching to their doom against yeah. Predator Rambo. What irony, too, because like as a soldier, you must be seeing all sorts of exotic and beautiful places when doing like the war. Oh! Oh! They're so good at those shots! Uh, man, the, yeah, the camo shots in this are terrific. Oh. But yes, the irony of yeah being so many beautiful places for so many horrific reasons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Vietnam looks beautiful, but oof. This way, let's go. Just you day you day could do like a Joker-style graft of this first movie, blood yeah. onto Punisher. Like yeah, the kingpin is the big deep boy. Like it's just there's so much. Oh boy. Look at them train tracks. Right up there. Oh, he's staying oh, in the like mine. Oh, it's a mine. Okay, we got there. No shooting. I don't want him dead. I want him alive. They fight. <laughs> Your men ah! are. Yep. Just like the number one most ignored request in this movie is to stop shooting. Amen. What? I want you to go into that mine. Oh, not me. What do you mean, not me? Look, I do this part time. I didn't come here to get killed. Oh my God. Untrue. Guys, just reserves for the paycheck to deal with Rambo. It's your last chance to come out. Maybe we should wait. <laughs> Earl, this creep is a killer. Besides, I'm in charge, and I say we blow it up. Maybe I want to yell that one. <laughs> just screaming our plan. My voice has one level. We need to rocket launcher him now. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Into the mine. Release the Balrog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Ned Flanders got the shot. Some of these scenes, man, some of these bits, I feel like it's a weird pull, but Jason Lives took some stuff from some of these scenes and put I it in their paintball that. sequence. The scene that involves a bunch of people paintballing in army outfits, and I feel like it's partly inspired by those. I mean, Rambo influenced so much, I wouldn't be surprised oh, if sure. any of those pulls and lines. Soldier of Fortune. Oh, Soldier of Fortune? Oh, Christ. Oh, damn it. What the hell do you wow. think this is? Some kind of a circus? Gotta get our Iwo Jima pick. Wow. Wow, ghoulish. He was shooting at us, Will. Come on, I wasn't taking any chances. This is great, too, because it's kind of skewering, like, the actual solidity of the structural hierarchy. It's your mess, Clinton. You clean it up. Will, come on. I gotta be back at the drugstore tomorrow. And you better get started right away. Wow. <laughs> Jesus, man. And his lack of value of human life at all, and he's just a guy at the drugstore. Yeah, you know at I mean? the drugstore of all places. Yeah. I like that while Troutman isn't like a hundred percent like scot free of any culpability, like he's still resourceful and he's still like one of the few kind of benevolent presences. Yeah, more on his side. Like obviously he tried to trick him into saying they get out of there, but. But at least he kind of understands, and yeah, he's sort of rooting for him. Oh, Shazbot. Ah. Oh, that was a great stunt. Holy crap, how'd they do that? This all looks so real, yeah. And the variables of how that could have gone wrong. Some of these stunts do feel like that. They just went with, like, whatever kind of... Film you falling. Yeah. I know he got, like, you know, his ribs broken, his heart stopped and stuff in Rocky. Like, I wonder how much... Like, Dolph Lundgren stopped his heart in one of the scenes they were fighting in Rocky, and he had to go to the hospital and, like, basically get brought back. If he dies, he dies. That almost happened, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Will Teasel. <laughs> Oh, you gonna have to swim? Oof. Gonna have to That'd be it. so scary to not know. Like you know, you don't know if there's an out. Yeah. But your only option is to put out your visual. And this uh, water and it gets has to smaller be... and smaller and. Yeah. Oh, it's gonna be so cold. It's gonna be mur cold and murky as shit. Like you probably can't see through this water. Oh, rats! Whoa, them rats! Indiana John. Look at them all. Oh my God. That's a good sign that there's an an exit though. Yes. Oh, so. that's back. Oh my God. Whoa. They're biting them. I mean, they're hungry. Rats do bite. Ow. God, this is like the descent just with mice instead. Rats instead. I didn't know instead. how this was going to go, and I don't like it. It's great storytelling, and I'm uncomfortable. Elements, man. I'm not like extremely claustrophobic, but I, I like to think I'm claustrophobic within reason. Yeah, I like to think I have survival instincts. And But this would be, this would be, I'd be struggling. a bit paranoid, yeah. 
Also, I don't have anything against rats, but that scene got me. Yeah. Oh. I have friends with pet rats I have no problem with, but that was a lot. Oof. Come on, Rambi. God, man. Where do they build these or find these caves? That'd be filmed in the volume now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Look, if I was out of line before, I, uh, I just want to apologize. <laughs> when? At what point? I mean, what would you have done with him if he came in? Would you wrap your arms around him, give him a big sloppy kiss? Or would you have blown his brains out? I want to see that kiss. We've all earned it. Yes. I couldn't answer that until I met him face to face. Well, there it is. Because it's just as well we never got a chance to find out. Also, the leaders of military out there casually drinking, and he's still like, yeah. It's also an interesting moment of power hierarchy. Yeah, and like dis the the discomfort, for lack of a better word, versus discomfort, where yeah. it's like they're sitting over a table, like stressing about this situation, where he's like completely surviving, roughing it to the max. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that relief? Oh, God, Seeing yeah. the sun without a guarantee of that ever, like, whew. It's a good thing they don't keep too good records of where the mines <laughs> let out <laughs> or the different entrances are. Oh. oh, man. Whoa. It was not far at all. Jeez. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. They are right there. That was also a very similar shot to the opening where it has him come yeah. into frame and then it turns. Yeah. So it's like now. Poetry. It rhymes. It rhymes. Hitch a ride, Rambo. Drive. Don't look at me. Look at the road. That's how accidents yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Robert, oh, get out of the truck. I got no beef with you. Yeah, go home. <laughs> You're welcome. No beef. That Rambo guy is on the loose again. Shit. Oh. It's Rambo. He's still around. <laughs> I love a man's asleep in the foreground. It's such a great, like, I miss that in the 80s movies. Like, yeah. Lethal Weapon always has stuff in the frame. Yeah. Guy looked like John Carroll Lynch. His first role, sleeping cop. Sleeping guy. Hey, you never know. <laughs> Bad to the bone should have just kicked in right there. <laughs> As it slid. The way that whipped past the camera. I love how the van, too, is, like, so steady, and this police car is, like, the all erratic. And yeah. Oh, yep. yes. Rambarticus. It puts the ram in Rambo. Or Ben-Hur. Whichever one has the race with the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Ben-Hur, I think. Ben-Rambo. <laughs> Buddy. Ooh, hoo, hoo. <laughs> that explosion. Did not expect it. No. Warning. Warning. <laughs> <laughs> so many great cuts in this, dude. Oh, man. The editing's great. I know it was a longer movie they cut down, but the editing in this has been. Yeah. Other than that one weird dog guy moment, pretty seamless. Oh. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. Right yes. through the barricade. Leapt. Oh. That switch cars. We gotta get that finale ring going. Chicken pie and steaks, too. So much food in this town. Sorry, I'm still on about the. the I mean, you're just upset at the. It was the inciting the incident of the goal. movie. I mean, yeah. that's fair. Oh, he's going to take him out. Ooh. Oh, he gets oh, the gun. We've seen this in so many references. The, the gun. He's got like an artillery weapon he just wields. Oh, no. Don't blow it up right outside of Captain Spaulding's. <laughs> got to do the murder ride, man. <laughs> Rob Zombie was not thrilled about <laughs> yeah. this day. Yeah. Like violence and freaks of nature. Whoa. <laughs> no. oh, the director's damn. like, we've got some budget to blow stuff up. Yeah, we saved it for deep in the movie. Wow. They actually just like. See, I was thinking that might be like that famous gas station set that they did shoot 
a bunch of things, including House of a Thousand Corpses, but, but no, I think it might not be because they now. decimated it. Yeah. Unless it gets blown up a lot and they just keep building it back. <laughs> like a universal set. Like that. Yeah, just rip. <laughs> Ooh, boy. Cool lights, on. baby. Yeah, they are. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> what a chain reaction. Wow. Exploding yeah, you dominoes. you just ruined your town, cop. You yeah. Let... And all civilians. <laughs> For your own safety, please evacuate the, the streets immediately. Oh. Remain what a descent into the madness. The There's Christmas also lights. A, a town PA. <laughs> yeah. Of the sheriff's catty corner of the shopping plaza, like... Small town PA. Just, hey, so you know, let's removed. go ahead and call it one, guys. Yeah. It stole an army truck. Blew up a gas station on the other side of town. The kid is resilient. Why don't you forget what you're thinking and clear out what you can. It's still explode. <laughs> just gently the, the sound. Oh. oh, it's so good. Teasel, you and all your men couldn't handle him before. Now, what makes you think you can handle him now? God knows what damage he's prepared to do. God only knows what damage he's prepared to do. It's also, it's such a simple plot, but it's so good because of the arcs and everyone's, like, investment in their roles. Like, yeah. I buy everyone's arc and yeah. how we got here. There's only one man in this room that's got half a chance. Well, that's not because I'm better than he is. It's because he trusts me. See, I'm the closest thing to family that he has left, and that may be all the edge I need. Is he betraying us? Don't you betray Rambo. This is my town. And I'm not giving it up to you or to Rambo or to anybody else. Do you just stay the hell out of my way? What would his motivation to stop Rambo be? Like an accolade? Like, I don't know what... Troutman? Yeah. I think he just wants this to be done with, and he still is like... He's got a sense of the duty. the best chance that you got of de-escalating this mm, shit. Yeah. Like, but, yeah. Like, one way or another, he's like, he cares, but also is like, I might be able to actually help, you know? <laughs> Instead of this idiotic rampage you guys are perpetuating. Destroying your whole town. All might be coming from inside the house. <laughs> and two, when these old movies have like a radio broadcast just like in the background. In and the there's background. still the occasional explosion and yeah. then like the plots moving along with the audio. Oh, Look here we go. That gun. Smile and have a Coke, man. Just smile and have a Coke. That is an insane weapon. How much would that weigh? And what's the kickback? Jesus. Because he's like lean functional strength here. That's like, yeah, I can't how, imagine what that weighs. How much lowering of your center of gravity is enough to <laughs> counteract that kick? Whoa, man. Take the road to flavor, baby. <laughs> I see why there's five of these. This movie is amazing. Well, it's a fascinating, like, I think the 80s especially had these franchises where, like, the first one is not the vibe you would associate with the larger franchise. Yeah, because I didn't think this movie was going to be this at all. Yeah. But the Equalizer's like that, too. Equalizer sure. feels like it, it pivots. <laughs> look at him! Ah! <laughs> look at that buddy shot! And look at where he is! Oh, y'all. Runs into the gun store with that. Y'all are fudged. Yep. Oh, he's trying oh, to. Oh, Molotov gas cans. I was like, why would he? Oh, that's why. And get some decoy ducks as well. Throw them off your scent, the decoy duck. Not generally like a big guns guy, but at the same time, I'm like, dude, get the variety going, man. <laughs> go, go nuts. Stock up. Oh, get no, he's up. just kind of like. Ooh, fireworks. Yeah. Oh, my God. Is he going to shoot? <laughs> yep. Strike a match. <laughs> Could have used anything, but he oh shot it with like an anti-aircraft gun. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. No, it's just a regular. The third deer. act of this movie is so different than the first two. I know they saved all the explosions for Act Three, <laughs> but we like we have earned this escalation. Oh, yeah. But it's a different type. It's a, to build tension. It feels like we've come so far since the beginning. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh man! Did he leave the stairs down? Yep. Oh, dude. Yep. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. Oh, he Michael Myers us. Oh, no, wait, he's just left a camera. Never mind. <laughs> I thought Rampo went outside. I was like, <laughs> he's going to climb up the other. It seems like way more efficient just to use the ladder. <laughs> no. Oh, 
Uno. 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 Yeah. Oh. Sometimes you get a shot in the dick when you're <laughs> karmically just. True. Right True. up Main Street. Rambo! <laughs> Rambo, don't. I don't I don't trust you. I don't trust him. Drop your weapon. I'm gonna order the chopper in and fly you back to Bragg. Get to the chopper. This mission is over. Never Look over. out there. Oh my Jeez. god. That's an ocean of cruiser lights. <laughs> It's over! Nothing is over! <sighs> it wasn't my war, and I did what I had to do to win! Back there, I could fly a gunship. I was in charge of million dollar equipment! Back here, I can't even hold a job! Ah! Yeah... No purpose no more. <laughs> Just... Oh, God. Where is everybody? Where is everybody? I had a friend. Was the Air Force. <laughs> I had all these guys, man. Back, Back there, I had all these fucking guys. guys. Aww. This kid comes up. This kid comes and sees Johnny Box. And the, the box is wired. And he opened up the box. Fucking blew his body all over the place. Jeez. I can't get out of my head. I can do seven years. Every day happens. Oh, dude. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. Come on, yeah. Wow. It's probably the closest you've been to anybody in a very long time. <laughs> oh. Damn. What a monologue. That was incredible. Yeah, what a crescendo. Jesus. What a I love that the climax wasn't the explosions. Yeah, it wasn't like some massive, you know, I don't know. It was that multi combo, yeah, yeah, like just something, yeah, real personal, real human. It's yeah, it's the reason for all this. <laughs> and the opening of the film and the end of the film are about the person. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we still get that moment. Yeah, you know, that guy still got his come up and it's a clear victory. When you're on oh. Your own. oh, interesting. Okay, that's Richard Crenna. All right, Brian Dennehy. Brian Dennehy's in a ton of stuff. Yeah, he's not. T is he? He's the, not. He's the not the skipper on Gilligan's Island, is he? <laughs> we got to look him up after because that yeah. was what a. I was not expecting that ending. Yeah, me neither. A Damn. freeze frame look away. It's okay. It's good. Mary Ballsmas reject nation. You know what the funny thing is? I already own this product before agreeing to do this partnership. I could have used my influence ring to get it for free or at a discount. But hey, now you can get it at a discount because this week we are, of course, sponsored by Manscaped. As a married man who's always on the move, I value looking sharp while keeping things efficient. And that's where Manscaped's performance package 5.0 Ultra comes in, featuring the Lawnmower 5.0, and it is a game changer. The package is honestly a perfect gift for yourself or for another man that you might know. I'll give this to John. If anyone asks, I pay for it out of my own pocket. But no, seriously, this is easily the best because it comes with not one, but two next-gen blade heads. See the difference? It's a good thing I have two now for demonstration purposes. So you got the standard trimmer for a perfect neat trim, but this one, the new foil blade for that super smooth finish, and oh yeah. It's all about safe grooming with their advanced skin safe technology. Plus, they're waterproof, so no more crumbs on the carpet. The package also includes the Weed Whacker 2.0 for ear and nose, and I definitely use this because look at me, I'm a hairy guy. And the must-have liquid formations. The Crop Soother Aftershave Lotion and the Crop Preserver ball deodorant say goodbye to post shave irritation and hello freshness and the ultimate cherry on top two free gifts manscapes premium boxers 2.0 and the shed 2.0 toiletry bag again i already have one the boxers i'm wearing my pair right now and the bag is perfect for all your grooming essentials as you can see so you ready to elevate your grooming game head to manscape.com and use code rejects for a cool 20 percent off plus free shipping remember it's rejects for 20 percent off at manscape.com let's get those jingle balls holiday ready with manscape thank you to shopify for sponsoring which is what we use for our merch store and is our game changing partner in e-commerce so whether you're launching a passion project or scaling to new heights shopify is the e-commerce powerhouse guiding you at every step from creating your first online store to opening physical locations shopify makes it seamless it's perfect whether you're selling exclusive merch or unique collectibles thanks to their all-encompassing platform for both online and in-store sales their checkout system unmatched it's 36 percent more effective at converting visitors 
visitors into buyers than other platforms. And let's not forget Shopify Magic, the AI tool that elevates your business with minimal effort. But seriously, reflecting on our journey using Shopify for www.rejectnationshop.com, it's been transformative. The transition, smooth, growth, exponential. Thank you again, Reject Nation. From simplifying sales to scaling our offerings, Shopify has been a cornerstone of our success. And Shopify isn't just for us. It powers 10% of US e-commerce, backing businesses big and small in over 175 countries. Their award-winning support always there to guide you. So ready to join the revolution? Sign up for Shopify at only a dollar a month at shopify.com slash rejects. All lowercase, shopify.com slash rejects. Start your Shopify success story now. Let's grow together with Shopify, team. It is an interesting choice, too, because they let it play initially. Bruce Greenwood guards Guardsman number five. Early wow. Bruce Greenwood. Early Greens. Guardsman five, Bruce Greenwood. You know, <laughs> hey, you got to start somewhere, man. Good for Buddy Joe Hooker, Richard Diamond Farnsworth, yes. Bruce Barber, Benny Dobbins, Will Harper, and Bobby Sargent did the work. Absolutely. Excellent hey, work. Especially in a movie like that this. Was, those were some incredible stunts. And Michael Westmore on the makeup. That is a prolific Hollywood makeup artist. Man, that was incredible. You know what else is incredible, Coy? Uh, is it this shirt? No, it might be this shirt. Guys, listen, all right? I think one thing that would have made Rambo, if I may, uh, uh, yeah. you know, you correct Rambo from experience, you know, I think one thing that would have made Rambo's mm -hmm. journey a little bit more mm -hmm. palatable, a little less harsh, uh, you know, surviving the elements, is if he had a soft and comfortable t-shirt from rechecknationshop.com. He was cold. Could have been close. He could have gotten a Space Babies mm -hmm. of the Galaxy t-shirt. He mm -hmm. could have got the classic tickets. He could have got America's ass for crying he out loud. He might have not been pulled over in the first place, preventing this entire thing from happening. Mm, you know, All of this destruction, damage, and carnage could yes. have been prevented with a t-shirt with a little from, uh, trip to rejectnationshop.com so hey guys if you want to in all seriousness if you want to support the channel it's one of our favorite ways to do so we got a ton of designs more popping up uh frequently not not like every single month but, but pretty frequently there's something new and interesting to look at so uh hey if you want to support the nation rock a little swag show your pride uh, we very much appreciate you doing so but uh but yes friggin a first blood part one Good Boy. golly, Miss Molly. Yeah. Uh, that was so much better than I expected. That was a different tone, a different feel, a different movie. I've seen the art a lot. I've seen especially this Rambo First Blood Part 2 art a lot. Yeah. So I expected that movie. And I'm curious sure. if that movie is the movie I think it is because I haven't seen it either. And if enough of you want us to watch it, leave a comment below yes. and hit a like. But I do find uh, a lot of the 80s stuff is more my jam. Like when you Do you know what Letterboxd is? The, the website. The social media app? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where, so, you, where you review movies yeah. and list movies and interact with cinephiles. Exactly. Sure. It is a, a snooty little hoity-toity, but very approachable They thing. have a specific knife design. Oh, I like by that. By Jimmy Lyle of the Arkansas Knife Smiths. Well, thank you, Jimmy Lyle. Filmed, and filmed in Panavision. Beautiful film filmed grain. in Canada. You knew oh, it. You knew it. You knew it. But Portland is south. Uh, that pay. said, uh, what was I saying? Uh, tone 80s. Oh, uh, so when I look at my letterbox... Um, the 80s is my favorite decade. You can actually look at oh. like what you rate, what decades were strong, what comedy, drama. Like you can, It gives you tons of stats. Oh, it's cool. dope. And I've rated 2,600 or so movies. Dizzle. Uh, and yeah, so I went through like all of the movies that I had on AMC and actually rated when I saw them. And I went through and like all the movies. I literally went through the top 100 movies of each year, rated everything that I remembered. And nice. the 80s are always my top. Like the 80s is my jam. And I've found that the 80s movies I missed, this, Demolition Man, Judge Dredd, are my biggest surprises because I either miss ha. them because of like it not being what my family watched growing up or yeah. I had the wrong impression uh. of it and I didn't want to have that actor ruined for me. Sure. So it's been really cool, especially with this, uh, going back and, and watching stuff from that era that's actually better than I would have expected yeah. and still feeling like it, it actually makes me think the 80s is better than I already thought it was. Do you know what I mean? Like, cream, I'm also watching the greatest hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Rambo's obviously got five of them. There are a lot of the earmarks of the 80s that, yeah, there are some that, that dip into wackiness and campiness and, and, and you know, the 80s cheese and coked out qualities that, that you might think of, but I think the but cream... But I won't stumble upon, like, a Walmart 80s movie, most likely, so yeah. I'll be just seeing that. I think, yeah, we're saying Yeah, that. The, the cream is particularly good for a decade that I think gets most of its flowers for like the nostalgia classics like you know, OET or things like yeah. that you know 
and, and you know Amblin things that that we're often hearkening back to. Uh, and you know the '80s. I think it's easy to forget. You know, do have a certain edge of like real cinema. Forty one years ago, this movie came out. Yeah, and and, and real <laughs> cinema that like is congealing with a more marketable genre, like an action movie or something like that. You know. And uh, and yeah, like it makes me fascinated to go back and, and in a film school kind of way, like, yeah. you know, revisit the decade. Because too, one thing that fascinates me is is this is a, a 1982 or released in 1982. So you know, if you're thinking about decades and tonality, you know, you're sort of in that transition point where the style of the 70s is slowly giving way to the sensibility of the 80s and, and and morphing into what the 80s, you know, kind of defining aesthetic might be. You know, when you get to like the middle of the decade. So here it's mm. like you do have certain earmarks that feel like, yes, this is an 80s movie, but it's being so early on in the decade. I feel like you still have a lot of that 70s sensibility where, like, again, there is passage of time. There is a little bit of that, like, cinematic, uh, you know, use of time. But I feel like for the most part, everything is, like, really immediate and it all grows out of that immediate seed of, like, he's walking into town. Uh, he sees his old friend's, uh, you know, mom or whoever that was. He goes and sees the relative of, of you know, his... Uh, you know, ex brother in arms. The last we the, find out later, which is also one. I like that we waited to find that out. Yeah, totally. And then you know, and then he wanders into town. The guy tries to take him out of town, and then slowly everything just kind of builds from there, and and it grows into this thing where once you're at the end and you're back in town and everything's on fire. Like, it does feel like this isn't even that long of a movie. This is an hour and a half. This it does is, so much more than an hour and a half yeah. than I would have thought possible. I feel like I watched a two hour, like, you a little know, over two. Uh, yeah. But like not a two in a bad hour. way. Yeah, in that way of, like, it's not dragging. It just feels very substantial. And it, and f except for maybe one cut here or there, it feels like well finessed and well edited and paced and all that stuff. It, yeah. it really, I love that everyone's arc made sense to them and we immediately knew the archetypes. Like, yeah. we, we get to grow more finding out, like, you know, he's he's a bit old that adds layers to it. But very quickly, we know what he stands for. We very quickly know, you know, those cops. We very quickly like I like that. I didn't quite trust the general or the, the colonel. Troutman, but yeah. yeah, but I also like that, you know, where he was coming from still made sense. Even if he'd betrayed Rambo, I still would have been like, I get where he came from. But sure. I, I didn't like that. I was judging him because I wanted to like him. So I liked that inevitably yeah, he did help, like, you, know, you know, like as a ranking officer, are you going to pull some kind of, yeah, some something where, where you're trusting on our shared relationship versus for like what's right for the country. Yeah. Cause I could see it going that way. And, sure. I, and I, I also think it's really bold and, and I consider the eighties, a very pro cop era. And this wasn't, and I like that because I do think there is, you give anyone power, they can abuse it. You give anyone with an ego, a gun, they can abuse it. You can give anyone yeah. that's emotionally charged uh, about something that they don't quite understand. They can abuse it. And, and it didn't paint them as mustache twirling. It definitely made them look at times ignorant. It definitely made them like, you know, shoot first, ask questions later. But that's real life with a lot of people. So I like that it was not pro cop, but it also wasn't like this is just black and white villainy because it allowed the movie to feel way more interesting by the decisions that got made. Yeah. And I think it also allowed the movie to feel like there was weight and nuance in decisions Beyond even what we saw on screen, like I want to know more about a lot of things because it wasn't so transparent. Yeah, it's like I want to go back and look at some of the stuff with that main sheriff character because, I, like, he talks about you know also, it, it seems like he's an ex-soldier to some degree as well or has some of that experience because he talked about it like I couldn't. Uh, again, I want to go back and clarify whether he's just talking about like you know the the war time as they say later was difficult on everyone but he's got like medals and stuff in his office and so part of me was thinking like it, it almost seems like you have two sides of a coin where it is like this guy has kind of been lucky enough to come back and do the dream in a way he lives in this like peaceful little mountain mm. town and is like completely removed from the realities of the conflict and and you know especially the view on soldiers at this point in time coming back from the Vietnam War and stuff you know uh, uh, it's almost like it's so extreme in his effort to like get this guy out of here. Don't want any of this in our peaceful, happy little town. And then you, on the flip side, you've got Rambo, who's like, I can't not be living in this. Ever, right, this is all know? I have for yeah. seven years. And and when did the Vietnam War end? Oh goodness, I see those are those yeah, are histor I, historical so elements. So sorry, I get better audience, but I also like the 70s? I thought I thought it was mid seventies. Yeah. So when he said seven years ago, I was wondering if this was like real time. 
Sure. Because like that would have been seventy five, or when they filmed this, that would have been seventy four because they probably filmed it in eighty one. But I I do like that this felt like it was of its time. Like it felt like it was an early eighties, both in the filmmaking but also the characters because of those ramifications. And and I do like that we had questions. Like I I like that we want to know more. Yeah. I am curious though if because this was so good, like <sighs> you've talked about with eighties movies, like is it diminishing returns because it's even Rambo is not called Rambo. It's called First Blood. The second one's called Rambo First Blood Part 2, making it, like, the guy you yeah. like. And by the third one, it's like Rambo 3. Like, does it get less nuanced? It, like, is it something that's <laughs> like, we're just going to shoot stuff in the third one? It looks like it from these posters it's that It's what I thought the first one did. Us. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is is I feel like uh, I can imagine how this would easily and quickly shift into something that... that I would imagine maybe some level of aspiration toward relevant commentary in yeah. the following sequels to one degree or another. However, I can see that being very... I don't expect them to have this sensibility where I think it would just be like too dreary to franchise for people if you were always dealing with like the real weight of trauma mm. of these you know forgotten guys coming home and struggling to find a place in the world. Like I feel like some of that will be there, but I feel like it'll probably prioritize like him being a resourceful badass and it'll probably give you... I more would imagine explosions. more explosions and probably like more overtly. It's like this rides a good line in terms of like the police that, that you know, are sort of embroiled in the main part of this conflict, even before you have like the National Guard and stuff coming in. Like all those characters are riding a line where it's like they're not likable. We're not really in their corner ever. They're not really that sympathetic even but there's something about them that, that like you said isn't just like it's absolutely not cartoony it's not pure, yeah. whereas I expect in the future installments might, we will have bad. just like these are really bad guys and we gotta see them die will we fight Russians because <laughs> like, it's the 80s you know what I mean like it'll, yeah. it'll get no disrespect to Russians but like yeah, it, it yeah, gets into that yeah. time it makes me curious, and yeah, I, I imagine that it'll become more lunky and ham-fisted with those elements, and maybe a bit more negligent with those elements. I don't think he has scars in the third one. Look at look at like it looks yeah. like he's just oiled up. And and that's the thing too is I bet it'll get shinier and it'll get more sort of Hollywood. Eye. Like this is an interesting time in cinema to me because it's like you have movies like this that have a lot of pulp and exploitable elements and things that make a blockbuster, make an action movie or whatever the genre is, but it's also like never really taking a break from the like stakes and the emotional pall that's cast over mm. everything like it's it's weird i think they did used to make these movies that have potential to be blockbusters or to appeal in ways that action movies in this case do but that are like always sort of being a film too yeah and i can see this turning into a thing where it's like now nah, let's, it's let's make this of more film. of a movie now and and yeah so like I, I really like just yeah having all that to chew on and the fact that yeah there's so much about you know the the weird tension between everybody and you know, these this yeah, these guys who are forgotten and struggling and who, you know, everyone just wants to pass off. And I like that even though Troutman, again, is a comforting presence and the closest presence, he is, yeah, sort of removed and nobody really knows what the experience of this guy is. And it is heartbreaking because when he's monologuing at the end, it's like, yeah. Man, that was a rough as, monologue. As, I mean, beautiful. Yeah, and as many legitimate reasons as there are to take issue with various wars and protest and, 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 you know, protest those actions at the same time, there is a point that, like, you also just have no idea, unless you've been there, what it's like to be in those positions. And so it just makes you take pause, I think, and go like, yeah, how how do the rest of us, you know, the people for whom you are fighting, you know, for whom you're trying to give the privilege of a life without this level of extreme wanton violence and horror, yeah, you know, at the same time, how can there be a balance of appreciation, you know, when... Yeah, like your politicians and the people making the decisions about this stuff are not helping at all. Yeah, and, and a lot of people got thrown under the bus. Yeah, and everyone's trying to maintain this peaceful home state at the cost of, like, there's a poison in the well. It's at the cost of, you know, like, truly looking out for each other and truly embodying the thing we were fighting for the most and all this, like, mirrored imagery. I just love the way... You know, you start out, again, idyllic, beautiful, sunlit, you know, pond and, and farmhouse. And then the second he gets that bad news, is the weather all gets dreary. Yeah, he's walking in the shade. I loved you noticing yeah. that. I hadn't caught up on that. And the, and the, and the movie ends in, in a fiery suburb. Like yeah, it, and it starts green and it ends bleak. Yeah, and then you go to the town and it's like, oh, but this is still, like, nice and cozy. And then Until it, it is. And it's increasingly more and more like a war zone. Yeah. And there's just, like, encampments and the National Guards. You know, there's trucks. And that war and, can happen anywhere. Like, it brought war home. 
home and yeah. it made it feel like that town was like, you know, a war torn little town that was so idyllic. Yeah, and in some ways, I mean, again, I am not an expert on like I want to I want to do at this stage of my life like a true deep dive back into history and and learn relearn some things, but it did seem like in a way almost th- this situation sort of mirrors this doomed endeavor that if from my understanding sort of was the Vietnam War sure. in that, you know, we went in some place and instead of leaving after a certain point when it seems maybe reasonable to do so. No, it's just like, we got to just keep on escalating this. We can't back down, you know, and that's very much what the cops are doing here. They're just like, we can't just let this go. You know, yeah. we got we to gotta show our display, our power and and convince ourselves, especially in the context here, that we have control and all that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, this is so much more rich than expected. I want more. More. Audience, if you'd like to watch Rambo First Blood Part 2, Gia. please leave a comment below. Please, if you're still watching this, leave a like on your way out. Please yeah. leave a comment on the way out telling us which of the Rambos is your favorite without spoilers. And if you want us to watch anything else in this vein, I've been enjoying this 80s kick, so please let us know what else oh, you'd like much. us to get into and hit that subscription bell so that we know that you want us to and you can get notified about us G- watching those very things. G- that is going to do it for this episode of John and Coy Watch Cool Stuff. We got a patron want to shout out? You want to shout out Ricardo Martinez? I would love to shout Give out some Ricardo passion Martinez. To our man Ricardo Martinez. Ricardo Martinez not only is your name beautifully syllabic Ooh. as it goes through. Not only does it include a Z, which is not a common thing. I got a Y in my name. I like it in these hey, unique letters hey. sprinkled in there. But, but Ricardo Martinez sounds like you could give Ricky Martin a run for his money. Ooh. And I feel like there's just like Ricky Martin, Ricardo Martinez. It feels like a an escalation. Like he's the Charmeleon to Ricky Martin's Charmander. You oh, know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's the evolution. the evolution. Like Ricky Martin short for Ricardo Martinez. Even he more wishes, hip shaken. Right? Even more roses clenched Maybe in even the teeth. Charizard. I Ooh. don't know Ricardo, but I might give him Charizard. He's a holographic here. Charizard. Yeah, like friend. he's got that that uniqueness because you know Ricky Martin's short for Ricardo Martinez because he's evolved into his fully fledged self. We appreciate your humbleness, your graciousness, your generosity, and your dope ass name. Dope ass name. Thank you so much for being here, buddy. We are grateful for you. Be well, people. See you soon. <laughs>